Oh, remember? Yeah. Can the Democrats come back? Well, the uh, you, know, you know, since somebody just uh, mentioned Dr. King, I'll, I'll, I'll mention one of my favorite quotes of Dr. King. Is he said, uh, "The arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. It bends towards justice." Uh, now, since I'm a Democrat, I assume that means it bends in the direction of the Democratic Party. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> uh, you know, the uh, Hate to, be, hate to be partisan about it. Uh, it. It bends towards justice, but only if we help bend it in that direction. Uh, we, we put our hands on that arc, and we bend it in the direction of justice. And so um, I think that the Democrats can regain majority status if they are doing some hard intellectual work around three big areas where I think we don't have a clear narrative. We don't have a clear message. Uh, I think the first is part of what I mentioned, and that's the whole issue of the global economy. Um, you know, if you travel in a place like Galesburg, Illinois, where they lost 2,000 manufacturing jobs, this is a town of 36,000, lost 2,000 manufacturing jobs, the ripple effects means effectively that 20 percent of the employment base collapsed in the span of two years. Um, You'll, you'll meet 55-year-old workers, and the question is, what, what's the democratic response to them when they talk about having lost their job, their health care, their pensions, having to compete for uh, fast food jobs, paying seven bucks an hour? What's our response to them? Typically, what the Democrats do right now is they uh, talk protectionism during the campaign, because the unions are important, and then they govern uh, as free traders, um, because multinationals uh, provide contributions. Um, that's a little bit simplistic, but but neither neither response is adequate. I mean, I don't think that we really have a good answer right now for that worker. Ultimately, the answer is going to be we're going to cushion the fall of globalization. Uh, and we are going to make sure that your child and your grandchild are properly pre prepared to compete. Uh, and we're not doing that. We don't have an effective message on that. As a consequence, that worker, he looks and says, well, if you can't do anything about it any more than the Republicans can, uh, then I'll go with the party that is going to give me some comfort with respect to me keeping my firearm and speaks the language of my church and uh, protects me from a threatening cultural environment. So that's one. The, the, the second thing, I think, is we, we're going to have to uh, do some good intellectual work about what, um, what an intelligent and tough foreign policy is. Um, you know, uh, right now, uh, the uh, reigning party has, a, uh, has the corner on the uh, tough-dumb strategy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just kidding, guys. Come on. <laughs> Not, but 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 I, but but we, we do have to have some uh, intelligent story to tell about how we protect the country from terrorism and maintain our national security, uh, but at the same time acknowledge and embrace, as opposed to ignore, uh, the shrinking of the globe and the interdependence that we're going to have with other countries, increasingly, at least economically. And the third area where I think we're going to have to do some work is. Uh, uh, talking about faith and family and values in a way that uh, embraces rather than excludes tolerance and diversity. Right? Uh, I, you know, we, uh, the Democrats have, I think, legitimate problems in appearing patronizing to people when they talk about these cultural issues. And I think that um, you know, people have to feel that you understand the importance of their family or their church uh, or their sense of tradition and community. Uh, and once they feel that you understand it, then you can actually challenge them to broaden their conceptions of community. 
But if they think you're disregarding them, then uh, they will disregard you and your political message. So, I don't know if you had another question. That was a long answer. Let me. Is liberal a dirty word? I, you know, I don't. I don't think. I don't think liberal uh, should be a dirty word. I, I just think the problem with liberal is it's a. I think the Republicans have invested 20, 30 years in branding liberal to mean what? Well, what was the uh, the ad? The the coffee, uh, the latte drinking, you know, Volvo driving, this and that and the other, uh, and you know, to the extent that liberal has come to be synonymous uh, with a uh, quote-unquote cultural elite that has a disregard for ordinary people, uh, then who wants to be that? Um, I, you know, but I, frankly, I don't think that our problem is labels in the sense that if we've got a good message, and we called it liberal, but it was a good message that made sense to people, people called me liberal in my campaign. You know, and I got uh, a million Republican votes. Of course, you have to choose the right opponent in order for that to <laughs> strategy to uh, succeed. <laughs> let, me, let me take a couple more of this. I'll take these three right here, and then I'll, then I'll get out of here. You guys can go eat. Go ahead. Awful. Irres irresponsible, and 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 uh, I mean, think think about the two judges who've been killed in the last few weeks, right? You've got Judge Lefko, uh, who I know personally, and who I had appeared before, one of the most gracious, thoughtful jurists that you can imagine, who, because of a deranged sociopath, who she actually expressed sympathy for, in rejecting a bogus. Uh, malpractice claim, uh, came into her house and killed her husband and 89-year-old mother. That's one. And the second was a judge presiding over the trial of a rapist who subsequently killed four people. And the implication, I guess, of this, my colleague from Texas's statement was that somehow we've created an environment in which that would kind of stuff occurs. Uh, you know, I, I, it, it, look, look, there is right now uh, an assault uh, that's, that's going on, on not just the judiciary, but the very concept of uh, rule of law. And, I, and by the way, there are a whole bunch of Republicans who are uncomfortable with it, so this is not a partisan statement. I think that there is a, there's a, there's a tradition in the United States that dates back certainly to the Civil Rights Movement and precedes that, in which the notion that uh, the rule of the mob is not uh, what governs in the United States, but we have processes and procedures by which we regulate our disagreements and disputes, that very concept uh, is, is, uh, is under assault. And I think it's vital for people across political persuasions, uh, editorialists and cartoonists and others, to really lift this up. I mean, the, the one thing I feel pretty passionate about is, is uh, uh, and, I, and I'm a Christian, but I feel very passionate about our civic religion as well. Yeah. Um, the, that's what makes this country work. I'll, I'll take care of me, my family, my community, my church. You know, I, 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 I will embrace that. But what allows me to do that is this civic religion of ours that says, you know, we, we go through a certain uh, set of, of rules uh, in order to, to decide how we're going to live together. Um, and, and, and I, you know, I think that that's something that Democrats have to come more vigorously to the defense of, but I think that it's important also that opinion makers like yourselves come vigorously to the defense of. Yes, sir. Uh, my son is a challenge from Mars. Yeah. Is it too late or is it open and late to, to vote for your hope project? 
That's a self-interested question, is it? <laughs> the, uh, uh, we're we're going to see if we can pass it this year, in which case, maybe by, your, by a senior year, at least you could save a couple bucks. Um, but uh, listen, I've got a six-year-old and a three-year-old. The, the day my six-year-old was born, she was born in the afternoon about 1 o'clock. I came home. Uh, you know, my wife and, and, and the new baby were still at the hospital. I, I was sent home to you know, fetch some things. I turn on the television set, 6 o'clock news. The lead story, if your child was born today, it will cost you $250,000. <laughs> and I, I staggered back, <laughs> fell back on the couch. So, I feel you, brother. That's uh, absolutely. All right. All right. I think this, this is the last question right there. Go ahead. You know, I, I would love to find out more about how the foundation is, is, is targeting young people, particularly, by the way, in uh, the public schools. Because part of what you're seeing is, around Illinois, school districts are having a crunch in terms of cash, and they are eliminating arts programs, along with music programs. Uh, and because they see those as luxuries that they simply can't afford. Um, the irony is, is that we've probably never lived at a time where our young people are absorbing more information visually than ever before. I, now, I'm not suggesting that's necessarily a good thing. We're in the Library of Congress, uh, and I am, uh, I'm constantly, uh, yeah, I just spoke to a group of students before I came here and told them, you know, my one piece of advice was turn off the TV. Um, but, uh, but, I, but I think that to the extent that you can reach young people early and harness those artistic, creative uh, juices and channel them into them thinking about making statements and forming opinions about the world, uh, I think uh, that would be a wonderful investment to make. Uh, you know, one of the most important things, I, I think, um, in, in an education is just practicing having opinions and then testing those opinions in conversation and in dialogue and getting reactions. Um, you know, too many of our young people aren't trained to, to comment on what the world around them. In fact, they're actively discouraged uh, sometimes uh, from doing so, from asking questions and poking holes and. You know, it's a natural instinct that I see in my six-year-old and three-year-old, uh, and we adults do our best to suppress it and, um, and discourage it. And the arts are a way in which, uh, you know, that's, that's uh, given free, it's, it's made socially acceptable, right? Mr. Roth, you know, was probably some, you know, doodling graffiti artist in the back of the classroom. <laughs> and, uh, you know, now he, he gets this fancy award, so. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it.